In case you missed it, here's a recap for you of the first five worst beginner fish in our list of super aggressive or predator fish. Number nine on the list are angelfish. Eight on the list are cowfish. Number seven are any type of puffer fish. The sixth worst fish on our list, tanks. A big howdy howdy to all of my fellow and future hobbyists out there. My name is Matthew. I am your BRS beginner guru. On our top 10 worst beginner fish list, we have already done numbers 10 through 6, and we'll put a link to that video below if you're interested. But all we're going to do today, right here, right now, is continue on with the five worst beginner fish. Worst beginner fish, number five on the list, is actually what I have right over here. We're talking seahorses and their relatives, the pipe fish. I personally love this tank, but I can say that I don't love this tank primarily because of the seahorses, because seahorses really just sit around for most of the day. The reason I love this is because of their interaction with the macroalgae and the soft corals. That's really what makes the tank. Just because they're boring doesn't mean they're not a good beginner fish. The things that make them not a great beginner fish is they require some special things. Number one, most seahorses need a cooler temperature. So keeping seahorses at, at 78 degrees is just going to slowly kill them. So for example, this tank required the use of a chiller. A chiller is expensive and it is definitely not necessarily a beginner skill to set one up because this tank has to sit at 72 degrees all the time. So that's one reason they're not fantastic. Number two is they are highly susceptible to disease. So mixing seahorses with other other fish means that those other fish can give diseases to seahorses. So this tank, for example, only has seahorses and fish that I have quarantined for months at a time, but it also has a UV sterilizer. And then adding seahorses and pipefish, they can often bring different diseases and they have different resistances to diseases from different areas. So putting them together can also be risky. So if you're a total beginner, I would say stay away from them unless you wanna build a seahorse pipefish specific tank. Then there's a lot of research you're gonna to wanna to do and setting up that tank correctly so that they survive and thrive. Worst beginner fish, number four on the list, are Antheus. I have made the mistake, and I'm gonna find you some pictures or some videos right now. I put three Antheus in a 20 gallon tank. Don't ask me why, that was idiotic. Antheus are not beginner friendly. There are several reasons they're not beginner friendly. Number one, they don't acclimate well. Going from the ocean all the way across the water into the US, usually lock into Los Angeles, then being taken out, being treated, sitting there for a while, putting back in a box, shipping to a local fish store, taken out, treated there, and then be putting in a plastic. I mean, you get the idea. There's a lot of shipping that goes on and they don't acclimate well. For 50, 70, 80, 90 dollars for each Antheus, Oftentimes you get them home and they just die. That's, an, that, that's a terrible thing. Not only that, but they need a larger tank. They're a schooling fish and they probably need at least a 120 gallon tank. You could probably put them in a slightly smaller tank, but a larger tank is gonna be a lot better. And the last thing is they need to eat constantly. You can't just drop in some pellets twice a day. They like to eat small amounts, really small foods throughout the entire day because that's, that's what they do in the reef, in their natural environment. That means you need to supplement their diet and feed them four, five times a day with really high nutrient foods. So unless you're at home a lot and have a lot of money to spend, I would say stay away from them. They don't ship well, they need a large tank, and you have to feed them a lot. The third worst beginner fish on my list are dragonets. Probably the most common that we know are mandarin dragonets. So pretty and so gorgeous, and some people are even able to breed them in captivity now. The problem with mandarin dragonets is similar to Antheus, they need to feed all day long. And they have these really tiny mouths, and they pretty much only go after live food. So we're talking copepods. Copepods are tiny, so just imagine how many copepods they need to eat every single day. So if you put a dragonette into a brand new tank that is not stocked with copepods, and you're not adding copepods every single week, it's likely gonna starve to death. Now there's a little caveat here, because mandarin dragonettes that are tank raised, that are raised in captivity, oftentimes are trained to eat pellet foods. If you can find one that is trained to eat pellet foods, 
then you are gonna be better off. I still wouldn't necessarily get one because you're still gonna to have to feed them several times a day just like the Antheus, but they are definitely hardier. So as a beginner, stay away from Mandarin Dragonettes at least until you have a large copepod population, and that probably means setting up a refugium. The second worst beginner fish is one of my favorite, and I think it's one that so many hobbyists wanna get, but I have made the mistake of purchasing this and then watching it slowly die. It was awful and 100% my fault. We're talking about the copper band butterfly fish. It, it is by far one of the most stunningly beautiful fish that you can have. Why is it on the list? They are some of the most finicky eaters in the world. And like the Antheus and the Dragonettes, they need to eat constantly. So unless you have a large tank that is super well stocked with live foods, and or you have one that will accept frozen mysis shrimp and stay away from them because there's nothing worse than getting this large, beautiful fish that is fat and happy that was pulled from the reef and just watching it slowly die in your tank. Even though you're feeding it all sorts of different kinds of foods, sometimes they just won't eat. Definitely not a beginner fish. And the number one worst beginner fish that you could buy and put in your tank is actually a fish that looks very similar to the butterfly fish. We're talking about the Moorish Idol. These are beautiful fish, and if you snorkel around Hawaii, you have seen them. Gorgeous, long waving fins. Don't get them. They are super picky eaters. If I thought copper band butterfly fish were picky eaters, Moorish Idols are even worse than that. I have heard story after story, and I have rarely, if ever, heard a story of somebody successfully keeping a Moorish Idol. The only people that can really have some success with that are people with huge stocked tanks that just have a ton of live food so that Moorish Idol can peck at it every single day. Without having that, which means pretty much every single beginner won't have that, just stay away from them. If you do want a Moorish Idol in the future, do a ton of research and talk to other hobbyists who have successfully kept them for their tips and tricks and then build a system around that fish. But you really have to do a lot of due diligence and that is why it is my number one worst beginner fish. Well, Matthew, why so negative? Why not talk about your top 10 favorite beginner fish? Because I already made that video. Click over here to watch it. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.